Okay, so you've been doing your research on freight brokering and you decided, hey, this is something that really marries up well with my skill set. It's something that I can see myself doing and enjoying. So I'm really looking at going into this thing and giving it everything that I got. And usually the very next question that we have is, how much is it going to cost me? We always want to know what it's going to cost us to get involved in something. And really what the real question is here is, what investment are you going to have to make? in order for you to get a freight broker business started because I say investment because you're investing money into your freight broker business in order to, of course to produce a return on your investment. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to go in and we're going to show you exactly what it's going to cost you or at least to give you a very good idea of what it's going to cost you to start a freight broker business from scratch. And I'm also going to show you some things that are required that you must have as a freight broker and what those prices are. We're going to show some things that are optional and then we're also going to show you some things that we have in place in our business that we didn't start out with but as we've progressed things have changed and we've made upgrades to our business. Okay so those are the things that we're going to dive into here very shortly so come with me as we go in and we take a look at what it's going to cost you to start a freight broker business. First we're going to start off with some administrative costs and take a look at you know, how those costs look and what exactly they are. So number one, we know that we have to set up a business. In order to, for us to be able to do business with our customers, we have to go ahead and set up a business entity. So you'll be setting up an LLC, sole proprietorship, or what have you, just depending on what, you know, what way you decide to go when it comes down to which entity you're going to use for your business. We use an LLC, and an LLC is going to cost you between three and five hundred dollars. That's a one-time payment, okay? With us, it costs us about $400, so right out of the gate, you're looking between three and $500 to get started with your LLC or to go ahead and start your LLC. All right, next up, after you've set your LLC up, you're going to get a motor carrier authority. Motor carrier authority allows for you to have the right, the authority to be able to broker freight. There's one kind of authority that's a trucking authority. There's a different type of authority for a broker and that's called a property broker authority that's gonna cost you three hundred dollars one-time payment one-time payment of three hundred dollars for your motor carrier authority okay now you have your motor carrier authority and in order for that motor carrier authority to go active you have to have what's called a surety bond this is a bond that all freight brokers have to have now I've seen this bond usually between fifteen hundred and three thousand dollars when I first got started at least and now I've seen those numbers cut back to about, to about 900 to 2250 is what I'm seeing my students get now. And, you know, I, get, I have a rate of $1,500 and I'm looking to upgrade that bond this year, uh, probably with the TIA and even get a, a better bond with a better price. So it's not just about cost. We want to make sure that we have a, you know, a solid, reputable bond, but we should be in the neighborhood of 900 to $2,000 depending on your credit. You know, as you, if you have, you know, great credit, then of course that price should be closer to the $900 range. If your credit is not so good, then it's going to be higher. When I first started, my rate was $3,000 and I had excellent credit, but I didn't know, I didn't know to negotiate. So I just took the price and that's the price that they gave me. So you want to look between $900 and $2,250 is what I'm seeing out there for surety bonds now. Okay, next up is the UCR registration. All freight brokers and carriers have to register with the Unified Carrier Registration Service. We have to go ahead and do a UCR registration every single year. That registration is going to cost you about 60 to 80 bucks annually. So that's an annual charge, something that you can look for every year that you have to pay, but it's only about 60 bucks depending on where you are, what state you're in. Okay. Now that we've taken a look at those administrative costs, now let's, have, let's switch gears a little bit and go down and take a look at the hardware. What is going to cost us for our hardware? When I say hardware, I'm talking about computer. Okay, next up, the type of computer I use is a Dell XPS. It has an i5 processor on it and it has eight gigabytes of hard drive. It's more than sufficient for me. You know, it's not a very expensive computer. If you have something with, you know, i5 processor, eight gigabytes of hard drive, you'll be just fine. Now remember, always do backups because when you don't do backups, you end up like I did and I lost everything and I didn't have a backup and I had to start from scratch. I was able to, you know, to save some of my information, but I lost a lot of it. So 
make sure you're doing backups, but you know, a Dell XPS, something with an i5 processor, eight gigabytes of hard drive would be, you know, a great place to start. Now, I'm not saying that you should go out and get a Dell. Whatever type of computer that satisfies you, then go out and get that computer, but just look at the specifications, i5, eight gigs, and then you can look at that and say, okay, that's probably about what I'll need to get started. Probably can get away with less than that. And that computer cost me about 600 bucks. Okay, next up, I use two monitors with my setup. And of course, they're Dell monitors. They're 22 inch and they're called P2214H as in hotel. P2214H as in hotel. They're about 150 bucks a piece. Again, those are 22 inch monitors. They're Dell and they're called P22214 hotel. Okay, now you're also going to need a printer. You're going to need a solid printer. There's a lot of printing that you have to do when you are moving loads and you're moving loads and having to get out rate confirmations and rate quotes and getting all of your paperwork over to your freight factoring company if you have to use a factoring company or getting your invoices out to your customer. There's a lot of printing that you're gonna do. I found that, you know, Brothers MFC 9130 CW, color printer for me, scanner fax com combination has been an excellent, excellent choice. It's a very, very good printer and I cannot say enough about how happy I am with that printer. So, you know, I really like the Brothers MFC 9130. I don't think you can go wrong with a Brothers printer myself. Okay, now that we've taken a look at some hardware, now I'm gonna take a look at some software costs and see what it's gonna cost to manage our business from a software perspective. Okay, we all are going to need, at some point, a transportation management system. Some people say, hey, I don't need a TMS system. I can get away with, you know, writing it down on notes or what have you. But I disagree with that way of approaching it. I think that you should definitely have a TMS system. You know, a TMS system to me keeps you organized, keep all of your loads in one place. And when you have to provide information or, you know, send a rate quote, send a rate confirmation, you can do that at the click of a button. So I really enjoy the TMS system. You're going to, you know, have a difference of prices when it comes down to TMS systems. You can go from $50, I put $100 here, but I've seen TMSs go all the way up to $700. So it just depends on what type of system you're getting. Now, I very much think that you should start out with a very basic system. There's one called Low Pilot. <clears throat> it's going to cost you about 50 bucks a month, but you should be between 50 and 100 bucks a month what you start out with on your TMS. My TMS currently costs about 225 bucks a month. I'm using a different type system. My system is called E-Freight Solutions. I've been using that system now for about two and a half years. I can do a lot more than I can do with, you know, my startup system. But that startup system is more than, you know, sufficient for you to get started with. I don't think that you should go out and get very expensive systems to get started because, you know, it's not about the system. It's about moving freight. You just put freight in the system. And, you know, of course, when it's time to upgrade the system, you can. But start out with a, an affordable system, 50 to $100 a month. Okay, next up is the load board. We're going to need a load board if you're going to be brokering freight. If you're going to go out and, you know, start giving prices to shippers, you're going to need somewhere to start. A freight a load board is going to give you a starting place when it comes down to, you know, getting your, your loads priced. You can start off with, you know, DAT or Truck Stop. Both of those are, you know, two of the largest, you know, load boards in our industry. Either, either or is a great load board to start off with. I personally started off with Truck Stop. And that low board cost me $120 a month with that rate make tool. You know, it to me is very necessary to get the rate make tool because it's going to allow for you to see the rates. You know, what rates are in certain lanes. And any lane that you put in, you'll be able to see what those rates are. So it'll give you a starting place when it comes down to developing or creating your rate that you're going to take to your shipper. Now, low board is going to go from $50 to $500 I've seen. Uh, and it just depends on, you know, what type, you know, all the different things that you want to put into your load board. Uh, but you're going to be more than sufficient again with a, about $120 load board. I wouldn't go in and start getting a whole lot of add-ons uh, until you get your business established because the whole idea is to keep down the cost. And then, you know, as you start to make money and your business becomes more established, you can add on, on different things. But I would say go with what is needed to start out. Okay, an accounting tool. This is definitely a need, in my opinion. You're gonna need 
a way of accounting for all of the money that comes into and goes out of your business. I think QuickBooks is a great, great accounting tool. I've been using it now for about four years and there's a definitely a learning curve. You want to go in and play with it and learn how it works, learn how to do simple uh, tasks like recons and things such as that. But uh, it's a very, very good system. It'll definitely keep you organized uh, when it comes down to your your finances. And that's going to cost you about forty dollars a month. OK, now let's let's look at some things that we're going to need as far as communication is concerned. OK, first up, we have a website. And yes, you hear some people say that the website is, you know, one of those items that's optional. You don't have to have a website to start. And, you know, I don't look at that the same. I think it's, you know, a very good idea to start with a website because you're setting up your company like a company is supposed to be set up. And when you look out there and you look at different companies, all legitimate companies, or at least most of them, have a website. You know, so, you know, definitely when it comes down to the freight broker world. So you want to have a website. You want to have a presence. And I don't mean go out and spend a whole lot of money on a website. I mean a website that's going to establish a presence, who you are, what you do, um, and, you know, what your contact information is. So you don't need a very elaborate website to get started, but a very basic website to give you a presence so that when someone goes in and put, you know, put your business in or put your website in, what comes up is a representation of you. This is my business. So I highly suggest starting off with a website and it's going to cost you between $250 and $500. Again, of course, websites can cost you thousands and thousands of dollars, but we're talking a basic website that just gives you a presence between $250 and $500. I wouldn't spend much more than that. Okay, high-speed internet. High-speed internet is going to cost you about $100. Bucks. Very, very important. You don't want a system that is, you know, delaying and very slow because, you know, when you're looking for rates and trying to get rate information and things such as that, you want that information to come up fast so you can get it back to your customer in a timely manner. Now, I'm not saying that you're in a race, but you want to do things in a timely manner. And high speed Internet is a very, very key piece to your business. Definitely want some good, solid Internet so that you can you know do your job as efficiently as possible. So. Get, get you some solid high-speed internet, and it's going to usually cost you about 100 bucks. Okay, next up, we have the telephone system. I use a system called Ring Central, and it is actually voice over IP. Now, I could just use my cell phone, but I like the idea of having uh, a landline, so to speak. And it really is not a landline. It's voice over internet. Uh, but it gives me a second option for my phone. And I like having that se second option. Now, is it required? No, you can definitely, you know, say, hey, I'm just going to use my cell phone for now. And then once I start making some money, then I can go ahead and put in a voice over IP line or or landline if that's what you want to do. But it's going to usually cost about 100 bucks. OK, now we're going to look at some optional things, some things that are optional. You're not going to have to have these items. Uh, but you might, it might be something that you want to look at. Now, there's something called Credit Builder. Because when you first come into the business as a new freight broker, you have to build your credit. It does not build itself. So there's a company called TransCredit. You can go in and start building your credit profile with TransCredit. And they are going to help you to establish your business credit. It cost me, when I first started, $250 annually. Uh, and it was very, very good for, for my business. It helped me to establish credit and get a credit rating established much quicker than it would have if I did not have you know, that service. So it's definitely something that you want to think about. Not something that you have to have, but you may want to give it some thought considering you know, the benefit that it can bring to your business. All right, contingent cargo insurance. You often hear a lot about you know, contingent cargo insurance out there. Is it required? Is it not required? The FMCSA does not require you to have contingent cargo insurance as, as a broker. I highly suggest that you take a look at it and consider getting contingent cargo insurance because most shippers are going to require that you have contingent cargo insurance. When I first started my business, my contingent cargo insurance was about $130 per month. That's a basic, you know, plan. And I would suggest that you get a basic plan when you get started. Talk with your, you know, your insurance provider, you know, tell them about your business so that they can, you know, move you toward or guide you toward the right insurance set up for your business. 
that usually is going to cost between $100 and $400. Again, I started out at $130. Now, my insurance is about $400 a month. But it's because I'm working with different customers that require different endorsements on my insurance. So as you, you know, get a, you know, a, a bigger customer base, some customers that are bigger customers, they're going to require that you have additional insurance. And if you want to work with them, you'll have to go ahead and increase your insurance and get those the necessary endorsements in order to do business with them. But usually between $100 and $400 is what you're going to see. First year and a half, almost two years as a matter of fact, my business was doing $130 per month you know, in contingent cargo insurance. That's what we were paying, $130 per month for CCI. Now, $400. So as you progress, you know, you, your costs are going to increase. You're going to get different TMS systems as you progress. You're going to do things, you know, you might get an, an additional add-on on your load board. You might get, you know, different things that you're able to do and see are going to cost different prices. So a factoring company. This, again, is optional. You don't have to have a factoring company. A factoring company is going to allow for you to you know, basically have all of your receivables paid for without you having to be concerned about paying for them out of your pocket. The factoring company come in and does that and, and you are going to pay a fee in order for them to do that. And that fee is usually about 5% on every single invoice. That's going to be a little costly when you first get started, but it will give you the comfort of knowing that you can move loads without having to worry about how you're going to pay them. But it's going to cost you about 5% per invoice. Again, this is optional. You can factor your own invoices through your own money if you have that type of money lying around. Or you can use a factoring company like 95% of the people do, like me. And I did it as well. When I got started, I used a factoring company. Okay, next up, we're going to talk about the freight broker training program. Now, this is an optional thing here. You don't have to have a freight broker training program in order to start a freight broker business. The FMCSA does not say that you have to have a freight broker training. It says that you have to have a motor carrier authority, a surety bond to get started. Okay, but at the same time, the freight broker training is going to give you the know-how. Right now, you don't know how to be a freight broker and a training is going to give you that know-how, the knowledge that you need to be effective as a freight broker, to be able to make money as a freight broker. A training is definitely something that could be a very, very big benefit to you. Now, those trainings are usually going to start out about $100 and go all the way up to $5,000. When you look at a price, it's not based on price, you know, to say, okay, because a training costs $4,000, it is just the training. You know, it's just a training that costs $4,000. So when you're looking at a training, again, find somebody out there you can trust and you can identify with. And then when you can see that person doing what it is that you're interested in doing, then you have the confidence more than likely that that person can teach you how to do it. But if that person is not doing it, then it may be a little bit hard to see how they're going to teach you how to build something that they haven't built themselves. So freight broker training between $100 and $5,000 is, again, optional. Highly suggested. Now, let's look at the total cost that we've just gone over and see what exactly is it going to cost us to get started here. So... We've taken a look at the website. We're saying that's going to cost us. We're just topping it out at five hundred bucks. We start said two fifty to five hundred. We're going to top out at five hundred dollars. LLC cost about four hundred bucks to get the LLC set up. The motor Carrier Authority, and again with the LLC, uh, you know, to get your LLC started, you're going to have different prices for different states. For about four hundred dollars, you can look at to be somewhere in the neighborhood of that number. Motor Carrier Authority about three hundred bucks. Surety bond, $2,000. Uh, we just estimated that, that, that number based on what we've been seeing with our students and the prices that they've been getting lately to start between $900 and $2,250. So we're going to start at $2,000. And again, that's an annual charge. That's not a monthly charge. Your surety bond is a $2,000. You know, I'm estimating $2,000. Remember, we said between $900 and $2,250 could even go up to $3,000 a year but it's a per year charge. And we're gonna show you how that breaks out per month. We're gonna estimate it at $2,000 for a surety bond. Of course, the, the, again, this is gonna be dependent on your credit, what your surety bond is gonna cost you. Okay, your UCR registration, as we talked about already, between $60 and $80. A computer setup is gonna cost you a thousand bucks. Printer, 350 bucks. TMS, about $50. 
you know, they start off, that's your first month payment of $50 with low pilot. And then we also have your uh, low board. The first month of your low board is going to be 120 bucks to get started. So when we look at those costs. Um, we'll take a look at what that total cost come to here shortly, but monthly cost for your TMS is going to break out to $50 a month. Low board cost is going to be about $120 a month. QuickBooks, $40 a month. Internet, $100. Telephone, $100. We're saying your bond times 12 months. We're ba breaking that down $2,000 a year times 12 months, about $166 a month. But most people are going to pay their, their bond every quarter or semi-annually or annually. Usually you don't pay a bond every month. Uh, so just think about that when you're looking at what your costs are going to be. I just break it down into what it's going to cost per month so I can get an idea of what my business is paying out per month. <clears throat> this, of course, here is uh, contingent cargo insurance times 12 months, $130 per month. So when we add up all of these costs for a monthly char cost, it's going to cost us $706 per month. So about $700 a month for our total, total monthly cost. When we added these up and came up with $47.80, we just added all of everything that we have here and came up with a total cost. But when you take a look at this, if you already have a computer, if you already have a printer, that's $1,300, $1,350 that comes off of this price already. You know, so some of this stuff you may already have when it comes down to your computer. Don't go out and buy a new computer if you already have a computer, even if you have a laptop. You know, if you have a solid laptop and you don't have, you know, a whole lot of information on it already, then that laptop could be something that you use to get started with. So you're talking about less than four thousand dollars to get started in your freight broker business. And then when you look at a monthly cost, we're talking about seven hundred bucks a month. So now when you look at that cost, less than $4,000 to get started in your own business, and then less than $700 a month of operational costs, then all you got to do is go out and make $1,000 a month and you're winning. You're, you're, you're on the upside of your business. Now it's going to take some time for you to get to that point, but it is not something that you're going to have to eat a whole lot of cost up front and then work a long time to make that money back. It's a very minimal investment up front. And when you start working in your business, when you start making money, you don't have to make loads and loads of money until you break even. You know, so it's, it's a very, very good business, very good business model in my opinion, uh, because of the fact that it does not cost a whole lot at all to get started, especially when you compare it to other businesses. Okay, those optional costs that we talked about earlier, $250 for your credit builder, $1,200 to $1,800 per year for your uh, contingent cargo insurance and your list purchase. Some people like to purchase lists, and I get it. I purchased a list when I first got started, but I found that I really didn't need a list at all. And when I talk about a list, I mean a shipper's list. You know, basically all it is going to be is a, a lead sheet, and you go down that lead sheet, and you can call shippers from that lead sheet. But you can find those shippers on Google as well without paying $500. So you don't have to pay that amount. Now, this $1,200 to $1,800 contingent cargo insurance, if you look back here, I've already included that in the monthly cost here. CCI times 12, $130 bucks per, per month. So we've accounted for that in the cost already. Okay, so that's what we wanted to share with you. We wanted to give you a very good idea of what it was gonna cost you to start a freight broker business. And as you, as you can see, it doesn't cost a whole lot of money to get started in this business. What this business is gonna cost you is time. It's gonna be a time commitment. It's gonna be something that you have to dedicate and commit yourself to building and starting out small and growing it as big as you wanna grow it. I certainly hope this has been helpful. If you found this to be helpful, please share this with your network. Like the video if, you've, if you like it. Now, I certainly don't want you to like the video if you don't like it. I certainly don't want you to share it if you don't like it. But if you do like it, give us a like, give us a share. We certainly would appreciate that. We try and make sure that we come with valuable information that you can use and hopefully it is going to be the information that helps you move your business to the next level. So with that said, see you at the top because the bottom 
is much too crowded.